Ladies and gentlemen, you've heard their point. Now, hear the counterpoint on Libertarian Counterpoint Podcasts. Good afternoon and welcome to Libertarian Counterpoint Podcast. Uh, we're coming at you on July 31st of 2020, uh, right still smack in the heart of a bunch of uh, shutdowns related to COVID and uh, a lot of uh, other chaos and um, <clears throat> rioting and such. Um, today on the show, uh, we've got uh, with me uh, in the upper left-hand corner, Leon Brathwaite. Uh, he's a retired engineer from the state of California. And in my upper right-hand corner, we have Tim Everett, our Screaming Eagle of Freedom, and uh, he's a pilot in the state of California. And we're going to try and discuss some of the current issues of today, giving us sort of a libertarian perspective. Um, and if you have uh, any comments or questions that you'd like to send us during the show, uh, we do have a uh, email that will come scrolling across, and depending upon where you're seeing it, you might see that email. I believe it's at, uh, uh, there it is right there, counterpoint at libertarian, uh, counterpoint.com. And if you have any uh, questions, well, I noticed I noticed it didn't introduce me as the last one at Liberty. Now, so I'm, I'm ah, no way. I'm pretty offended. <laughs> I forgot to get it into the middle of the name, so I let it go this time. But yes, Leon, the word Brathwaite, the <laughs> last word in Liberty. <laughs> and, and I thought it was Brathwaite. Wait, Brath like, wait. <laughs> he always pronounced the word wrong, but it's okay. <laughs> Don't cancel me. <laughs> I, mean, I know that I know Biden doesn't think that Leon is black, but that yeah. doesn't mean you have to call him Brath White. He's Brath Wait. Yep, yep. According to Biden, uh, if you ain't voting for him, you ain't black. And we That's know right. we yeah. ain't voting for Biden. Yeah, yeah. So, so, my, my Biden son and I ain't black. So. <laughs> yeah. But, but anyways, uh, if, if you're out there and you have any comments or questions, you shoot them there during the show and uh, we'll try and get to them in a bonus section. Um, also, if you have any uh, experiences of uh, your business being shut down or job loss due to riots or the COVID lockdowns, uh, shoot your experience to us that way too, and uh, we'd love to have you on the show sometime if we can make that work. Uh, so jumping right into the issues, um, well, it's July, and uh, oddly that means tax season this year. Uh, we've uh, the taxes were delayed until July fifteenth due to the COVID uh, lockdowns, and so that's uh, uh, something where it's made a big impact on a lot of municipalities and uh, other government functions. It's so hard to notice because there's so much chaos and crazy debt and deficit spending that, you know, it's it's in some ways it, it might be getting uh, short shrift in the news right now with all the other things going on. But it is sort of a uh, uh, unprecedented thing to just shift the tax date like that uh, to the middle of July. <clears throat> and so that's having impacts on a lot of municipalities as well, trying to pay their bills. Um, so uh, I, it, and of course, you know, for for uh, you know, libertarians, we're always a little bit dismayed about the amount of debt and and deficit spending. But in this case, we, I mean, I guess they're starving the beast, <laughs> even moving back to tax dates. You guys have any thoughts on uh, the craziness going on around the uh, taxes and and the bleak financial outlooks for our uh, municipalities? I did I mine back in like February or something. I because I'm gonna I always almost always at least uh, get a refund so you know i did mine quick i didn't want to wait but that mm -hmm. so that didn't have any effect on me um so i i don't know i i really haven't given it a lot of thought how about you leon well when when you look at this this bleak outlook right now when you look at the contraction of the economy when you look at when you look at the um the, the job numbers I mean, if they close down the economy, they shut down the economy, that means people are not working. Businesses are, are shut down, a, a ton of them. Then what are you going to expect? The revenue is not going to come in. So they they still want to spend all the spending, they do it, all, all the spending that they normally do. They still want to do it. But yet they're, they're shutting down the economy. 
which provides the revenue to support the spending. So what do they expect? They are trying to create this no risk world. We're gonna lock down the economy and we're not gonna to try to mitigate the risk of the, of the pandemic. We're not gonna to try to mitigate that. We're just gonna lock everything down and then there's hope that some utopia will come about and then everybody will be fine and we just go back to doing what we are doing. Now, both parties are responsible for this because both of them are spending money like Kwazoo, like if it's, it's going out of style. And now we have this disaster on our hands. The deficit is out, is out of control and they're still talking about spending more. Let's get people back to work. Let's learn to deal with the risk of the pandemic and let's get people back to work and then try and, and then we could think about what we should spend and what we should not be spending. This is ridiculous what's going on right now. Well, I believe they're talking or they're, they're arguing about a difference between two and three trillion or something for the for the next bailout yes, exactly. package. That, uh, and, and that and is sort trillion. Of that is trillion with a T note. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. That's what they're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. And it's uh, uh, just uh, crazy. And, and, you know, we can kind of see the, uh, the results of this crazy spending starting to affect, uh, you know, some of these, uh, <clears throat> some of these, uh, you know, things like precious metals markets and other things like that, that would normally yes. uh, kind of be an indicator that, you know, maybe inflation is happening. You know, I know for a lot of libertarians, there's, you know, uh, the audit the Fed, you know, uh, uh, deal that's uh, always being talked about. But the, you know, clearly, you know, I mean, we've seen, uh, I think silver has shot up in the last, I think, four or five months from about $15 an ounce to almost $24 an ounce right now. Yeah. So, I mean, it's uh, uh, just some crazy indications that a lot of people are, are having um, a little bit of pause about what we're doing to the dollar right now. Well, they're expecting, they're expecting the inflation. I mean, they are pumping quite a bit of money into the economy. So, I mean, most, most people agree that, it, well, Milton Friedman in particular, who is the person that I tend to follow, think that, that usually about 18 months out, this tends to be inflationary. So maybe that, there's, that, there's that expectation out there that we might be dealing with some inflation down the road because of what they're doing right now. Well, I know an, another, another issue too is that the... Uh, um, the uh, credit rating agencies like Moody's and uh, some of the others, I can't remember all their names, but uh, they're starting to, I guess they, they haven't downgraded a lot of the states and you know municipalities yet regarding this, but I think they're, they've got them, a lot of them now with negative outlooks, which means I guess there's a chance they're going to downgrade in the future. Yeah. It's hard to see how they couldn't. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, exactly. It's, it's sort of like who are you going to tax if, if you're telling everybody to stay home and, and like you said, I mean, maybe we haven't seen the impact of this yet because with, you know, they, they essentially had the revenues from last fiscal year or last, or not, not fiscal year, but rather the last calendar year. They essentially had those revenues uh, right. in place prior to this whole COVID uh, uh, fall down. But now, you know, they're telling people to stay home while at the same time spending a lot of money. <laughs> and that means people tell just me, literally aren't going to have any revenue to, to send them in the form of taxes. So you know, it's only it's only in government one and one does not equal to two. You know, it's only in government that happens. Yeah, yeah. So I know there's a there's a. It's funny you look at some of the ratings of some of these states, and you know, uh, it's funny you know when you hear somebody like California has still has an A somehow in the rating. <laughs> you know, when they say A A A three or something like that. I don't know, yeah. or with a minus or or whatever it is that they they give it. Uh, um, but you know, it's it's kind of you know a, a little weaker on the curve than a lot of other states as far as the, the the credit rating, but somehow they they manage the euphemisms of putting a bunch of A's. The only one that doesn't have that is Illinois, I think, right, right. now. <laughs> uh, Chicago, Illinois, like I mean, California is in bad shape, but Illinois is is, is worse. Seriously, it's worse. Yeah. it is. Yes. Yeah. Well, uh, as as we've been talking about, uh, you know, the impact of some of the COVID on the uh, on the municipal uh, municipalities, also too, uh, you know, we're entering yet. It seems like a second wave of lockdowns uh, uh, here in California. Um, we've had the governor come back and say that schools are going to be shut down through the end of the year, essentially distance learning. Uh, and apparently, there's even some some arguing with uh, some of the teachers unions in the southern part of our state. I think the LA Teachers Union and 
uh, such about whether or not they should even, uh, I guess the amount of hours they should even have to put in in distance learning. <laughs> so, so I'm not quite sure what it is they're after, but uh, you know, to, it seems like a lot of people that would be the dream to stay at home and <laughs> just have to attend online, you know, some- Yes, and, yeah, and, get, paid, and get paid their full salary in the process. Exactly, yeah, and then, and then you know, apparently that's uh, that's a problem for them too. But uh, we're, you know, aside from that, you know, it means the shutdown of bars again, uh, mask laws coming into effect, the uh, <clears throat> shutdown of um, uh, gyms again. It looks like also, uh, and various other businesses. I, I I'm not sure if they've. I think they've shut down all uh, inside dining in restaurants as well. Yeah. So. I can still yeah, yes. pick up food, but you can eat outside. So yes. um, I've, I've yeah. actually done. I've actually done that. I've gone to places where um, we buy the food, and then we have to go outside and eat. I've yeah. actually done that. Yeah, yeah. Tim, any thoughts on your neck of the woods on how these lockdowns are affecting you? Uh, yeah, I mean, just just the same things that you're referring to, and Leon's referring to is happening in San Diego and the. Um, uh, you know, a lot. Some of them are going putting uh, places to eat out in the parking lot, so they're taking away some of the parking to, which they don't need really, uh, to uh, to accommodate people sitting. And then, um, you know, I, it's it's just uh, I don't think it's a enough business for those types of uh, businesses to to maintain that for very long. Uh, it's going to, it's, they certainly can't make profits, uh, you know, restaurants, especially in a high rent district like California and San Diego in particular, um, I mean, they're, they're still paying a ton of money, uh, for per square foot for that piece of real estate where they, they have just a few people to occupy it now because sure. they, they have to either have distances or they have to, you know, just have outside dining and then what happens when it's winter time and it's freezing cold and um you know what's going to happen then uh if you can't sit inside you're just not going to go just exactly. yeah um yeah so you know this is unsustainable typical unsustainable government largesse and uh, it's unsustainable um and to get back with the taxes my assumption is that people that are delaying paying or delaying their filing their income taxes are all going to be people that are going to have to pay. So by postponing, uh, you know, first of all, this is this is for the previous year, this is for 2019. So by postponing their uh, day of reckoning from April 15th to July, was it July 15th? It was, it was July 15th, yes. It was July yeah, 15th, yes. Um, they're postponing, you know, people like me, that get a refund and everybody else that gets a refund. I mean, you're just a complete mental retard if you don't file as soon as possible. Uh, so, so uh, let's just assume that the majority of those people, except for the retards, oops, sorry, did I say something politically incorrect? <laughs> we don't want to cancel um, you now. <laughs> <laughs> except for the mentally challenged among us, uh, that, <laughs> that delayed, uh, delayed getting a refund from the government, uh, though uh, the rest of them are paying. And so that means that by delaying these governments that uh, really need it now, really need the money, have delayed getting it. And so, I mean, I don't know why they did that other than, you know, to, to be nice to us poor minion taxpayers. Uh, so while they, you know, while they're uh, stealing money, that I guess it's like, you know, give me your money. Let's see. Oh yeah, give me your money, but not right away. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I guess maybe that's why they did it. Um, anyway, it's just just a complete. That's also unsustainable for the governments to do kind of, you know, that kind of stuff too. I mean, they if they're gonna, <laughs> I could. I, I, what am I saying? All they have to do anyway is to run the government is just to, to create more debt. I mean, they, they've proven that over and over and over again. And us libertarians have been shouting from the rooftops. This is uh, 
this is going to collapse the economy, collapse the economy. We've been bearish for so long, we don't even know how to be bullish anymore. And so th the only way we can be bullish is to go, well, it looks like we're wrong and there really is a perpetual motion machine and it's called the printing press of the Federal Reserve. And so just print away and just fund everything with debt. It's no downside. I mean, it just can continue forever. I mean, why not? You know, it's obviously there's been no repercussions. Inter, you know, inflation hasn't been all that bad. And, it, you know, if it if it does, uh, if it does, uh, you know, rear its ugly head, um, you know, we've been talking about it for so long. It'll be kind of like, uh, I don't know what it'll be, a uh, disappointment or something. At some point, I think we're going to crash into that wall that Elon Musk kind of put out there. And he was talking with Joe Rogan. If, if you want to have stuff, you got to make stuff. And no amount yeah, of right. government printing funny money is going to, <laughs> going to uh, bridge that. Um, you know, right. and, you know, right. eventually, you know, if we keep on this track, you know, where literally we don't work, but we keep on printing money, you know, eventually we'll get to that socialist dream of North Korea. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> oh, of, of, of Venezuela. Of Venezuela. Yeah. 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 But you yeah, see, this is what is happening, though. This is what is happening. These lockdowns, done in our name, really, because it's the governors of these states are doing it, these lockdowns are ruining people's lives. They're ruining businesses and people's lives. And yeah. you're right. It's unsustainable. So what's going to happen? We're going to collapse our economy in the process of supposedly creating this utopia where we'll have no risk, where everything will be nice and wonderful, this is just such garbage. I just don't understand why we continue doing it. Look at this thing that they're talking about right now. Oh, we are, well, I guess we're going to talk about this later, but this thing about the mail-in vote. You know, I could never understand this nonsense. We can line up to go to Costco every day, which, which I do when, when I go to Costco, when there's a big enough crowd. We could line up to do that, but we cannot line up, we cannot line up to go vote, which is, a, which is our most precious right that we have here in the United States. This well, is you know, what's going on. But I, and, and I know this this issue is definitely going to get you riled up to the point where you may want to go out and riot, which is one of the few things the government does seem to support nowadays. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll, we'll get to that issue, though, in our next show. <laughs> but speaking of rioting, <laughs> and, uh, you know, if you just keep Leon contained in, you know, in his seat, <laughs> not out there rioting, yeah. but not. Yeah, uh, exactly. You know, they, well, you know, we thought we were done with the Chaz, you know, they had given a decree that, you know, the Chaz in Seattle, the Capitol Hill Autonomous Zone, and mm -hmm. apparently, you know, they, they made a decree that no more Chaz, but I guess the uh, they didn't get the memo, the protesters, <laughs> so they've yeah. shown up since then again and been smashing windows uh, in their in their ah. peaceful protesting. Um, yeah. So, But it's yeah. not just there, too. Apparently, you know, this is somehow connected to the Portland riots that have been going on for the last... I, I don't know what is it like. Uh, it's uh, into the sixties. Yeah, yeah, several months. Six, like. yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think it's well, sixty something days now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and so this is uh, really, you know, just getting to be insane. And of course, you know, with the uh, Portland, uh, you know, riots, uh, a lot of that now, at least, it, it didn't in the beginning, but now it has to do with the idea that Trump is sending in uh, police officers or. Um, it guards, I guess, federal, federal, federal agents, federal officers, federal, federal law enforcement yeah. officers, yeah. in order to protect the federal facilities that the local yes. municipalities won't protect. Um, and uh, you know, and apparently there's still some riots going on in other places. In Austin, we just had a guy uh, who was shot in the protest, uh, not by the police, by another person in the crowd. Um, they were trying to drive through and. Uh, apparently, the person was a libertarian, from what I'm hearing. They were carrying a gun with them, and, yes. you know, uh, trying to advertise their Second Amendment rights, I guess. And they got shot because the person who shot them felt threatened, I guess. And so, yes. uh, but anyways, yeah, did you guys have any thoughts on the the endless rioting, I guess, of 2020 will be known? If I could, <clears throat> I'm sorry to bring it back a notch again for the second time in a row. But if I could go back to what Elon Musk was referring to, was the second aspect of inflationary pressure. So the first one is you print a bunch of money or credit and you inject it into the economy. The second one is simultaneously you shut the economy down so there's no uh, there's fewer goods 
and services available to spend that money on. So that's a double dose of inflationary spending because with less goods out there competing for that money, the remaining goods that are available go up in price. It's just supply demand economics is very yes. simple. And that's what he was referring to. If you don't make stuff, you don't, you don't have stuff. <laughs> you gotta yeah. make the stuff. Um, he wasn't necessarily talking about inflation, but that's an inflationary pressure. And uh, uh, there we go. So um, to get back to um, to the riots, and uh, let me ask you the um, the shooting you're referring to was where there was a guy in a car and he was being approached by a guy with a he carried an AK-47 as to yeah. his original interview. Yeah, I, I can was, give you a little detail if you want on the back end. So it sounded like the guy, you know, it's one of these protests where. Apparently they're clogging the street like usual yeah. in a lot of these places. And so a car somehow got into that road. And we've seen this a gazillion times in the news where yeah. they're trying to get through and there's protesters on all sides of the car, maybe banging the car that some, some counts had the, you know, car being, I guess, you know, attacked, I guess, you know, as far as people banging on the car and other things like that. <clears throat> um, and apparently the, uh, the gentleman who got shot, I guess he had a girlfriend in the crowd who is apparently in a wheelchair and he's claiming that she was jostled or threatened by the car or something. And so he approached the car with his AK-47. He says he, or they, the people who support him say he wasn't pointing it at the car, but some people in the car, I guess, claim he was pointing it at the car. So that, and then of course the people in the car opened fire when they saw this person approaching them with an AK-47. So. Okay. Well, if you go stupid places with stupid people doing stupid things, you can expect to get into trouble like that. And yes. so I'm, yeah. I'm not really, yeah, I'm as much of a Second Amendment supporter as I am. I'm not of the mind that firearms, especially rifles, I mean, if you conceal carry a, a pistol on you at a, at a, a, a protest, that's okay. I mean, it's not meant to intimidate, but if you're slinging a rifle around, I don't think there's a place for that in a protest. Personally, sure. you're not right. you're not um, exercising, you're not doing any kind of militia duty as defined in the Constitution and the uh, and the Declaration, and so that just leaves uh, you're just trying to intimidate people, and you know that's just wrong, in my opinion. Well, you know, I could see if it truly was. A peaceful protest, you know, something where people yeah. literally had their their permit. They weren't infringing on other people's rights. They were just yeah. simply out there talking. Maybe carrying a weapon isn't, you know, a ter such a terrible thing. But you know, in, in yeah, this they, case, yeah, right. They, I'm saying they they have a right to do it, but you can yeah. have rights to do all kinds of things that aren't a good idea to do. You know, um, but uh, yeah, I mean, right. There's there's little gray areas and things uh nits to pick oh. about it but yeah if people are standing in the street that's violence right there okay yeah yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah 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 but oh, sorry. but you know in you know, in all of this you know you know the, the the media is the media is is probably causing a lot it's causing a lot of these problems you know in the way in the characterizations of some of these things one of the first the first thing they're doing is telling us mostly peaceful process, uh, a protest. When we see the, the buildings burning down, we see all the things that are happening around us, and yet they're telling us mostly peaceful protests. It is nonsense. And we got to do something about these, uh, about these rioting that is going on. You know, I just discovered that the, 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 um, the police chief of Portland is the elected mayor of Portland. And he is out there with the protest, the so-called protesters, Talking about oh he's with them he's he's understanding their their cause and blah 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 and all this sort of things and he's supposed to be the police chief not only be that he was elected by the people but he's also the police chief and he's out there with them quote unquote protesting it is the most ridiculous thing you could imagine well anyway the protesters turned the so-called protesters turned on him and he had to run but you know who you run with he ran with his armed security around him you know right yeah he, yes. But are you talking about the Portland mayor that did that? The Portland mayor is also yeah. the police chief. Oh, he's also the police. <laughs> yes. Well, yeah, I wonder what, 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 is, what, are, 
gosh, I wonder what his pension's going to be like. It'll be five, <laughs> six hundred thousand a year. That guy. Holy we know one thing I, I wanted to jump yeah. in with, and I, I was going to jump in on the point Tim was making earlier because I wasn't quite sure if we were going to get there. And it was the uh, uh, the aspect of something Leon just talked about peaceful protesters. Well, once you're out there and you are infringing upon somebody else's right in the commons to pass someplace, you know, if you're standing in the road or someplace else and not allowing other people to get by, at that point, you're violating other people's rights. You know, you are not a peaceful protester anymore. I mean, it's one thing if you want to, you know, peacefully sit on the sidewalk and, you know, stand for something. But once you do that and you're blocking other people and you want them to sit there for hours on the freeway or something while they listen to you, you violated their rights. And then to compound that, once you violated somebody else's rights, then you approach them with a gun as this guy did. <laughs> I think at that point, I, I you know, I, I think a lot of people would start to really be concerned. How far is this going? <laughs> yeah, you you kind of lose empathy. Knucklehead yeah. noise patrols coming up. Uh, yeah, mm-hmm. knucklehead noise patrol, and there is the there the, there, there it is. There's the sound. <laughs> so, <laughs> That's supposed to be like this. There we go. Yes. <laughs> okay. Well, we like to end the show every time with uh, uh, some kind of crazy oddball thing that we've heard from somebody uh, to. Uh, get us all on the same page, uh, either being outraged with a little bit of laughter. And in this case, um, uh, in the spirit of collegiality of, of and civility of our elected representative, uh, Nancy Pelosi came out and and called the uh, the virus the Trump virus. So she said the Trump virus is rolling like a freight train. And I mean, it's like you know, sort of like what point does you know it's funny that they're offended by it being called the china virus but they're, they're absolutely okay with it being called the china. i don't know no, it's the trump virus yeah yeah what do you guys think about that i guess it was donald, i guess it was donald trump who unleashed the virus on the on the world you know it is donald trump who caused the pandemic according to nancy pelosi it is true donald trump does say some stupid things sometimes but nancy pelosi take the cake on this one you want to tell me you want to tell me donald trump was sitting here in the united states the, the, the people in China send all the people all over the world. We all end up having to be locked down, but somehow or the other, it is the Trump virus. What nonsense is this? Jesus Lord, does this woman have a brain at all? I must have missed that portion where Trump unleashed this on the world. I must have missed that in the news. Well, maybe they should call it the Fauci virus because he's the one <laughs> back in 2014, I believe, that authorized the uh, um, uh, basically weaponizing the virus. In other words, um, they, they did uh, changes to it to make it more virulent, v- V-I-R-U-L-E-N-T. Uh, if I'm, I'm probably not saying that right, virulent or however yeah. it's pronounced. Yeah. And uh, so uh, be- because they stopped that, that kind Chinese of- Chinese lab or was this Yeah, a, and it was in okay. the Wuhan lab, correct, where they did it. So um, there were some 200 scientists that were protesting the, I mean, writing letters, not, not blocking traffic, but protesting this <laughs> utilization. <Actual> peaceful protesting. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, writing letters about how dangerous this can be. And sure enough, something got out, um, you know, whether it was uh, just naturally occurring with some monkey or whether it came from this lab. You know, so if if anybody and, and Fauci was was defending this kind of testing all along from the whole last few years, and then he predicts a couple of years ago that or two or three years ago that there's going to be a pandemic, and you better watch out. You know, and so, you know, I know it's all it's conspiracy related and yeah. and conjecture and that kind of thing, but if anybody deserves the moniker of, um, you know, the name on the virus. If it's not going to be China, then it should be Fauci and not Trump because Fauci's the guy <laughs> that pushed for all that kind of testing. Well, I, it's, I guess I guess we'll have to uh, figure out what to uh, name time. the next virus for in our blame game. <laughs> virus right. naming. But but at this point, I think we've, uh, we're have we over time. So um, I, I thank you, those okay. of you who uh, watch the regular show for watching uh, uh, some Libertarian uh, Counterpoint uh, podcast. And you can catch uh, our past shows on Facebook's uh, Libertarian Counterpoint uh, Facebook page. 
uh, <coughs> among other places. Uh, so we'll give it a uh, thanks again for attending.